Hey guys, Dozer here bringing you a new video. Just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about my thoughts on the state of the game, as well as have a more, uh, I guess, measured conversation about the state of competitive play. Um, as you all know, I just got done with the national championship where I brought Prism, uh, of course, in order to try and compete and have a good time. And when we got there, uh, we were expecting a lot of Briar, but uh, when we were told on day one that 30-something percent of the field was going to be Briar, uh, you know, it, it was not going to bode well for the rest of the weekend. Why do I say that? Well, for one, Prism in my testing versus Briar was already like a really bad matchup. Like, it just felt unwinnable. So, for me personally, like, obviously I was disheartened to hear that it was going to be so much Briar. Especially when I ended up being, just by the luck of the draw, put against half Briars out of my CC pods or pools. And um, then you go to the finals and, oh, top eight is like five Briars, two Chains, and Lexi, who's built to counter Briar. And um, even those Chains are also running Rosetta Thorn because seven of the top eight were running Rosetta Thorn, as was about half the tournament. So... I really wanted to talk about kind of how I view the balance in this game as it currently stands, kind of my concerns about the balance of the game, the competitive scene, and um, maybe offer some uh, insight into the mind of a player uh, to give anybody at LSS who might be listening uh, a bit of feedback about the game. So for some context, I've played TCGs for many years. Um, I've played them at a pretty competitive level for a long time as well. I've been competitive at numerous TCGs. And when I came to Flesh and Blood, I really fell in love with the mechanics because the game felt so well designed. And it still does. I mean, don't get me wrong. Fab is a great game at its core. And I think that as long as LSS is able to maintain the core design principles that they've had thus far, I think that the game has a bright future ahead of it and will not, you know, dig a grave for itself too early by printing and breaking the format and making it distasteful for the majority of players. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, when I first played against Lightning Briar, uh, it felt really, really dirty, right? Because everything they played was basically zero cost with go again and attack for a breakpoint. Whether that was a 4-attack um, go-again, 4-attack go-again, 3-attack go-again with an on-hit, which that being lightning, uh, ball lightning, um, as well as just being able to dump your hand every turn while generating free go-agains and free um, embodiment of earth tokens that worked on everything. Very quickly, it seemed apparent to me that I would never be able to actually block out a Briar. It was impossible. Um, Rosetta Thorn, for instance especially is impossible because let me just break this down for a second because you know not everybody might have um, taken a look at um, at that so if we go and look at the first place briar list from the uh, nationals we take a look at rosetta thorn so rosetta thorn costs one to attack with it deals two damage physical uh, when it attacks and if you've met the requirement it deals two arcane um, to whoever you want now why is this a problem um, if you look at this card and you think, okay, I need to block this card for whatever the reason is, well, how are you going to block it? Well, you need to start by blocking the physical damage, which is two. And then from there, you also need to stop the arcane. So if you have to use a card to block Rosetta Thorn, you also have to use another card to block the arcane, at least a yellow, and you'll need at least two arcane barrier in order to block it all. Because again, Arcane Barrier doesn't, uh, one, does not block um, two damage from the same source. You have to have Arcane Barrier 2 or two sources of Arcane Barrier 1 in order to do that. So, why is this a problem? Well, Rosetta Thorn attacks for only one resource and must be blocked with two cards when its uh, condition is met. And its condition is not hard to meet. Um, playing a single attack action and a single non attack action card in a turn is ridiculously easy to do. Runeblade has a million good non-attack actions. There are a lot of good generic ones, and there are a lot of great um, cards in Runeblade and in generics that have go again naturally. So 
it's not difficult at all to meet this requirement. And so you're basically swinging for um, some unblockable damage to your opponent, especially after you've come in for, say, seven damage on average, um, making this a normal turn, quote unquote, of 11 damage. But if that buff was a plunder run, well, now your opponent's also got an extra card that they could be throwing at you, which could be another four attack go again. And very quickly, the damage output of this deck becomes very uh, impossible to deal with while also getting around your blocks. Because you have to have two cards in hand to stop this, and you have to block at least two cards to stop a seven attack go again. So even if you manage to block um, with four cards to stop that one attack, one non-attack buff, and the Rosetta, if they have anything else in their hand, again, they could have done that. They could pay for Rosetta with their Tunic resource, and they could have two other cards in hand and a card in Arsenal to attack you with. So that's another potential 8 to 12 damage that they're coming at you with on top of the stuff that you already full block. So that's like a 24 damage turn. Um, That's that's a lot to deal with. All the while, by the way, if they get any damage through, they're making their embodiment tokens, which will buff their block in the next turn, making it even harder for you to threaten their hand and catch up, right, on tempo. So Rosetta Thorn costing one, you might think, oh, well, you have to meet the requirement. It's only four damage. Like, maybe that's fine. Let me direct you to another card that um, that sort of fits that same bill. And you might not even know what this card is because really no one played it um, back in the format where it was initially released. So Galaxy Black is Chain's Shadow Runeblade weapon. It's a token, so this is what you might have had if you ever drafted Monarch. And it also costs one to attack with. And it has one attack. If you've played a card from your Banished Zone this turn, right, a conditional buff, it gets two physical damage until the end of the turn, going up to three. And if it hits, it deals an Arcane. So Galaxy Black has two conditional upsides where if it hits, it deals an Arcane. And if you've played a card from your Banish that turn, it gets plus two. However, you can block Galaxy Black with a single card. If you block this card with a single three block card, which is almost any class card in the game, you also block the Arcane that would have come in on the on hit. Compare that to the lovely Rosetta Thorn here, which costs the same, has a higher floor, um, where it can be blocked less easily because it's too physical just always and when it comes in it comes in with two arcane doesn't have to hit it doesn't have to meet any additional requirement just oh just comes in with two arcane which is really really hard to block so over the course of time rosetta thorn can chip through basically any strategy while paired alongside with all these really cheap cards that immediately play into the strategy and give it just immense value so I think Rosetta Thorn is a really big problem. Uh, when you see the amount of Briars that have just been taking over the meta, and the only things that really stand up to it are Chain, which also runs Rosetta Thorn. I'm sure we'll find that here with Pierre's uh, list here. Oh, look at that. We've got Rosetta Thorn. What a surprise. No other weapon. Uh, by the way, again, Runeblade has the most cards in the game. They've had four straight sets of support. And if we look at even... Uh, Rune Blade, we look at um, weapons. Rune Blade has five different weapons to choose from. One of which was already banned because of the, uh, let's just say, balancing mistake at LSS. None of the Rune Blades are running any other card besides Rosetta Thorn, and they have access to arguably more weapons than any other class in the game. Which should tell you something because now. And all, almost all these are generic, too. Nebula Blade, Reaping Blade, Dread Scythe, they're all generic, um, as opposed to Galaxy Black. And for some reason, again, Rosetta Thorn's not elemental, restricted. Um, basically, Rosetta Thorn's too efficient. Playing against this is really unfun, and it makes it impossible to really do a defensive strategy to ever try and get your bearings and come back and wait out the onslaught of reds. Again, if we take a look at the guy who won the U.S. Nationals list, his deck is almost entirely reds. Uh, red, zero cost attack. Red, zero cost attack. Red, zero cost attack with go again. Uh, zero cost, go again, giving non-attack action. Coax of Commotion is an attack that is 
a zero for four. And it's hilarious because he literally runs a Coaxa Commotion and you like you literally don't even need that card. Like it is effectively a meme card. So like, and you can draw a card and just try and keep popping off on your turn with the go again. Like the fact that they can unironically run Coaxa Commotion and win a tournament where it's seen zero play forever because it gives your opponent advantages as well as you. Like, that should be sending off some alarm bells in the balancing department over at LSS's head because he's got zero cost, go again, zero cost, go again. Uh, zero cost for attack that gives go that can be easily given go again um, up and down the line, and he's only got a couple of blues and yellows. Well, what are those blues and yellows? We got a zero cost, go again, zero cost, go again, buff, non-attack. We've got a... Another non-attack action that puts more cards back into your deck. We got zero cost attack, go again. And then we've got, of course, Captain's Call, which buffs all of our zero cost cards. Plunder Run, which buffs all of our cards. Sting of Source, which buffs all of our cards. And Time Snap Potion, which is probably just here um, for the meme, honestly, and for Prism, potentially, with Arclight Sentinel. And Gorganian Tome, which is just here as a way to reduce the overall size of the deck and to also set up the lightning token generation. And the fact that that's literally the entire deck where you just, you know, strap on your helmet, as people have said in other card games, and you just go, 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 all game, um, never running out of gas. You know, there's really, past the Rosetta Thorn and everything else, you just can't survive long enough to ever mount a comeback when you're facing this much damage every turn. Uh, unless, you're playing decks like Bravo, or unless you're playing decks like Ice Lexi, um, or decks that can force your opponent to lose cards out of their hand, or unless you're playing against decks that allow um, you to out aggro the Briar. Like, aggro Katsu is probably the highest damage output of any deck in the game. However, um, and I assume this is aggro Katsu. Yeah, Ancestral Empowerment, uh, Hurricane Techniques. You know, he's got some defense reacts in here, but, you know, he's got all of these, um, Whelming Gust Wave synergies, Whelming Gust Wave. Um, so, you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, if even Aggro Katsu, straight up racing Briar, struggles because of the embodiment of Earth tokens, how is that going to produce a healthy meta, right? If everybody is bringing Briar, or people are only bringing stuff to try and counter Briar, um... It just becomes very, very annoying and very unfun. You know, you get to the tournament, everyone's playing Briar. Even the Briar players are saying, oh, this is miserable. It's just Briar mirrors all day. There's, It's just who draws the better sequence of cards because no one's blocking. And because blocking doesn't work, right? Like Blocking just doesn't work against Briar. Um, attacking and no blocking doesn't work either because she can block with one card if she ever needs to. Um... And I guess what I'm just saying is that I really hope LSS looks at what decks have been dominating uh, the game and realizes that these hyper-aggressive slam every generic into the deck cards or decks that can just do four attack go again, four attack go again, do 20 plus damage turns no problem are really starting to um, kind of get out of control. The fact that we just went from a tier zero format where Chain was the um, best deck and the only way you could really beat him is by hard countering everything he's trying to do and ignoring every other matchup. And even against Briar, you might not even be able to do that unless you play certain specific heroes like Bravo uh, or Ice Lexi, right? Um, and maybe you could have like Dorinthia and Bolton who punish people for not blocking. You know, Bolton potentially running the... Um, Saber combo to just heal a bunch and really pressure Briar. Or maybe you have Dorinthia who can get around Briar's blocks and snowball with the Dawnblade. And even Dash, who's the most equipped character to stall out the Briar because of her innate ability to build up resources over the course of the game by pitching a blue to load up her guns and her buff cards and then eventually poke down the Briar while blocking out. You know, these strategies exist, but when you see these strategies brought out in Forest to try and counter Briar, and then Briar is still this dominant, you have to wonder, is the meta in a healthy place? So, obviously, 
I might be a little biased because Briar hard counters Prism and I have zero ability, no matter what I've tried, to make Prism work into Briar. And I now really feel for all the people that were playing Azalea and Leviah and Viserai and Blinar back in the day. Because when there's just nothing you can really do, you just have to kind of take that, or even Kano into, uh, into Prism. It's a very difficult, nigh unwinnable matchup half the time. And it just feels really bad. Like, why would I go and invest my time into playing competitively when the character I enjoy playing doesn't have any competitive viability at all, right? Um, like, maybe sometimes you can sneak your way past enough Briars to get further on in the tournament, like some people may, might have been lucky enough to do, but when you're put up against five Briars out of ten matches of CC, and you know it's basically an auto-loss, you know... It doesn't make you want to keep playing. It doesn't make you want to come back. It doesn't make you want to uh, invest that time and energy and um, in traveling and all these things. Just to sit down, watch them play 4-4-4-4-4 four, 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 four every turn and just win off of that. Um, meanwhile, you're scrambling to try and mount any offense at all and they just ignore it, take the damage, and keep attacking you because they just have a more efficient deck. Um, so... As far as the state of the game, I think if Briar was not so dominant, I think we'd have a pretty healthy meta. Um, I think she's crowding out a lot of potential options, and I think that while there has to be a best deck in a card game, um, there doesn't have to be a deck that is so much better than everything else in a game like Flesh and Blood. And I say that because in Flesh and Blood, the core math of the game is brilliantly designed. Truly it is. But when they start going around that core design and start allowing for higher ceiling stuff to happen um, while not making that stuff available to every strategy, um, we're just seeing that time after time that the class that just abuses the generic pool the best, where before Chain abused Art of War, abused E-Strike, abused Plunder Run, now it's Briar's turn to abuse Plunder Run. It's Briar's turn to abuse uh, E-Strike and CNC and all these things. Um, and all these zero-cost go-again cards um, that don't really require a lot of thought. I mean, you just play it. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to worry about what you're paying for it. It just works, right? Um, and it gets over almost every block in the game inherently. So you're winning the card-for-card -card trade just by playing the card. And there's really not much interesting going on there. So that's kind of where my thoughts are on the state of the game. So what can we do to fix it? I think first things first, LSS has to really consider whether or not they're going to leave Rosetta Thorn uh, accessible for constructed play. Personally, I think Rosetta Thorn needs to be banned in constructed. Obviously, you can have it for limited, you can have it for draft. But the fact that in Constructed, every deck that top aided the um, U.S. Nationals of an event of over 450 players, um, except for one, ran this card. And over half, well, basically half the tournament was running this card anyway, and no other weapons, should tell you that this card is ridiculous. I mean, Rosetta Thorn on its own, again, requiring two cards to block it um, for one resource is just is just disgusting. There's nothing that competes with that, especially when they don't even have to pay for a card to use this when they can just use the tunic resource. If this costed two, it'd be a different story. If it was two arcane on hit, it'd be a different story, but it's not. So I would start by banning Rosetta Thorn. As we said, Runeblade has plenty of options for weapons. It's not like they don't have a choice or they don't have access to other stuff. So it's not like banning Rosetta Thorn is going to hurt anybody um, to the point where they can't play the game anymore. They have plenty of things to fall back on, like Nebula Blade, which is a two damage deal five if it hits effectively, um, which is very powerful. And you already have stuff like Dread Scythe, which costs three to attack, does one arcane on attack. Um, and so when you're comparing Dread Scythe to Rosetta Thorn, it's, it's just kind of hilarious, right? Um, beyond that, I think... The next thing you have to really look at is 
we have to look at Plunder Run. Um, Plunder Run is easily one of the most abused cards in the game. Um, it allows your opponent to, or whoever plays Plunder Run, to pressure so much when they're going hyper wide, like Chain did and how um, Briar is currently doing. Where, and even Katsu used to do this, where you just flip the Plunder Run from Arsenal, you get three extra damage, which is like a nimbleism just on any attack. For the rest of the turn, anything you hit with will draw you a card. So in all these decks that have a ton of go again attacks and can like draw off of stuff like Mask of Momentum, they can draw off of stuff like a Snatch with go again. So doing that with Plunder Run just allows you to take way, way, way too long of turns and way too wide of turns for any opponent to realistically deal with. So Plunder Run could just be banned, although I don't think it needs to be. I think if you simply errated Plunder Run to say, um, the next attack action card you play gains, if this hits, draw a card, and kept the um, the arsenal effect, I think Plunder Run, Plunder Run would be balanced. I think you would have a totally fine card that if you block it, you know, you prevent the crazy beneficial on hit of drawing a card in a game where you're gated by how many cards you get to draw. Um, and it would still give you that attack buff, and it would still do everything that you're trying to do. It just wouldn't let you stack multiple plunder runs. They block the first thing, and then you attack another thing, you draw two cards, and just keep going. Like, that play is really degenerate, and I think it's not healthy for the game at all. And so, if they wanted to not ban plunder run, I think they need to errata it. But they could also just ban plunder run, and I would be happy. Because, again, every deck that's been abusing the meta has just been abusing plunder run, and I think that's an egregious enough reason to get it out of the game. Because clearly it seems to be uh, far more powerful than anything that they could have foreseen, and I think it's just, it does not need to be in the game anymore. Um, beyond that, I think the only other change I would suggest LSS make would be regarding a rules change concerning Ball Lightning. So as you may or may not know, Ball Lightning is a um, attack action card for Lightning that costs zero, Attacks for three with go again, and if it hits, it deals an additional one. Um, which means it's a four attack go again, effectively, unless you block it. So this card is actually blockable, which is great. The problem is, the way this card interacts with Arcane is very, very problematic. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, if we take a look at the card Sting of Sorcery, which was also released in the uh, Tales of Arcane set. Every attack action card you play this turn gains, when you attack with this, deal one arcane to target hero. Because of the way that Ball Lightning is worded, this means that Ball Lightning is dealing the arcane. And since Ball Lightning is a lightning card, it's going to deal that much damage plus one. Now, that might sound fine, like, oh, well, you know, if the arcane hits, you get to deal an extra damage. But that's not how it works. Currently, how it works is, because of the replacement effect stacking rules, the turn player gets to decide in what order replacement effects happen. Because Ball Lightning's effect here is a replacement effect, and because Arcane Barrier, um, if we look at um, Null Rune, for instance, because these are also a replacement effect, your opponent can decide which of these happens first. And that means they can decide to have the Arcane get pumped before you even have a chance to Null Rune it with the Arcane Barrier. This is incredibly problematic because you can play Sting of Sorcery into the Ball Lightning, and there's no way you can stop this damage without pitching for two resources and having Arcane Barrier 2 on your equipment. Somehow. Most characters have to run Null Rune equipment in order to get Arcane Barrier 1, and then if they have to run two Null Runes, they're sacrificing half of their uh, basic equipment in order to potentially stop of ball lightning damage when it's coming in um and this could be from a, a ton of different sources too compare that also with the fact that ball lightning gives um this to other, all the other cards on the chain um that are lightning and elemental um if you ball lightning and into ball lightning they both affect the um the second the, the second one that you played so a card like sting of sorcery if you play Sting of Sorcery with Go Again for zero, into Sting of Sorcery for Go Again for zero, into Ball Lightning for zero, it's going to come in with one Arcane. 
turn player decides to have the ball lightning affect the buff first and then the null ring can happen. So it's coming in for four arcane. Two pings plus two is four arcane for zero resource and it's still going to come in for four physical. All right. So then let's say your opponent manages to stop the arcane and block. Let's say they use, you know, uh, two, like four resources worth of pitch. Let's say they pitch two blues. They have two floating and they use a card to block the ball lightning. Okay. You attack with another ball lightning and this one's going to come in for three arcane plus three arcane and it's three attack. So now you could use two of that floating to stop to that arcane, but you're still going to take an additional um, four arcane while still having the ball lightning threaten the three damage. So even when you pitch two blues and block with two three blocks in your hand, you're still taking four arcane through that turn. And that's just a five card, four card turn. If they had a five card turn where they had another ball lightning coming in, that other ball lightning would do two pings buffed up by three each time. So it'd be dealing four arcane twice so it's eight arcane for zero resources would go again and then you could even use your tunic resource to pay for your rosetta thorn and swing for another two arcane and four damage that's that's kind of insane um it's not hard to do that either because ball lightning doesn't even have to hit for you to get all that damage it could be blue ball lightnings and it'd still be fine and you can run nine of this card so i think Ball Lightning, in its interaction with Arcane, needs to be reworked. I think a simple rule change would solve this, where um, whenever you would take damage effects, like um, like these Ball Lightning effects, you get to stop the Arcane with the Null Rune, and then if, it, if the Arcane actually deals damage to you, then it deals the extra damage, which is the intuitive understanding of how this card reads. Sting of Sorcery, one Arcane. If the Arcane would deal damage, it gets that much. Fine. If I don't have Null Rune, let me take the two damage. But if I have the Null Rune, I should be able to negate this Sting of Sorcery damage before the Ball Lightning buffs it. If that were possible, you'd be able to actually stop the Sting Ball turns um, without having to give up your entire hand to slow it down. And I think that would, in tandem with the Rosetta Thorn ban and the Plunder Run, either Arata or Ban, would put Briar into a position where she is still very strong, but she would then have to figure out some other ways to be aggressive while also giving her the ability to potentially explore actually using the cards in her class, such as Earth and Lightning cards, which you might notice uh, they didn't really run. The only Lightning cards in this guy's deck, again, the guy that won Nationals at US, has Ball Lightning times nine, because again, it's just a zero go again and in, uh, Lightning Press, because it's a zero cost buff by three. Lightning Surge is a Lightning card. It's also a zero cost go again. But there's no Lightning Fusion that's really needed here. Um, Arcanic Shockwave does fuse Lightning, and, uh, and Twine Lightning does fuse Lightning, but that's it. Really, that's, that's basically just it. And... Considering the fact that Tales of Aria was all about fusion, was all about all these interesting cards. There's no Earth cards in this list, by the way, if you've noticed. Um, and as long as this deck is so powerful, and as long as the strategy is so powerful, we'll never see other Briar archetypes. We'll never see an Earth Briar that really can compete. We'll never see people experimenting with all the fusion cards because they just don't have to. So I think that simply changing the way that Ball Lightning interacts with Arcane, banning Rosetta Thorn, forcing briar to use other rune blade weapons of which there are plenty um and forcing briar to or forcing every character to stop just jamming nine plunder run into every deck uh, again blue yellow and red this card is insane um if we were able to errata plunder run or ban it i think briar would be in a better position to be countered by other decks and i think the meta would be a lot healthier and we wouldn't have to ban any legendaries. We wouldn't have to really um, hollow out the core of what makes Briar Briar. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. So anyway, um, that's just my thoughts on the state of the game. So that's what I would do to fix the format. 
you know, feel free to disagree and uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you have um, other ideas of how you would balance the game. I know a lot of people have said how they think that the real problem with Briar is that you can't um, stop the uh, the triggers from her tokens or that they are really generic. Um, I think um, that there's some truth to that where maybe if the lightning tokens only procced or you only generated lightning tokens if you played lightning or elemental um, non-attack actions and maybe if you only get embodiment of earths off of hitting with elemental or earth attacks um, I think that would be a potential fix but I don't think that's the core issue I think that Briar's ability would be really cumbersome to rework and would make just everything really complicated versus you know using the least complicated solution for the best result i think if you simply can do a simple rules change with ball lightning ban rosetta and look at plunder run and potentially either errata it or ban it i think like i said that would do enough but maybe i'm wrong maybe you have some better insight into it than i do so let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts on that and uh look forward to reading it and uh having that discussion with you so thanks again for watching and i will see you guys in the next video peace